Hello everybody and welcome to MCW number 191. Now we are live here from San Francisco, California and we have one hell of a show planned out for you guys here tonight. Starting things off we have a a jam-packed tag team match as the European champion Adam Trozier gets a team up, set, set to team up with the purebred athlete Deuce to take on T Tyler Van Diver and Cody Gray. Right after that, we're going to see uh, some action in the women's division as Donna K goes one-on-one -on -one with Slater Mingus. Then a triple threat match to determine the number one contenders for the UPW Tag Team Championship as Brian Brutus of Blood Money takes on Chris Hunter of Strength and Power and Devin Porter of the QB Buzzsaws, and the winner's team will go on to face the block party for the UP3 Tag Team Championship at Wrestling Palace. After that, Mandy takes on Sydney Van Diver, and of course, our main event of the evening, Duncan Jones, Dustin James, and Marco Rodriguez, forming a coalition to take on La Armada de Mexico in a six-man tag team match. Absolutely huge show that we have planned out tonight, and we are going to get right to it here in just a moment. First of all, how's it going, Yandy? How's it going, Brendan? How y'all doing? Uh, let's see... Last few weeks been uh, busy. Glad to be here tonight. Don't worry, man. I was fucking busy last week too, bro. <laughs> uh, fucking hence why the show is going on tonight instead of last week. Let's see here. Sorry, I went to uh, went to hyper focus mode in Yu-Gi-Oh. And one, even though I haven't played in like six months, and my deck uh, has gotten hella nerfs since I, uh, since I last played, and still won. Fuck yeah, bro. Good shit. Uh, oh, I said I won twice. Whoops, you're all good, bro. Fucking uh, embellish that win, dude. Be proud of it. Be fucking proud of yourself for overcoming the odds, overcoming the uh, inexperience that you drew, the rustiness, the Yu-Gi-Oh rust for the past number of months that you ain't been playing. And coupled with the fact that, like you said, your fucking ne uh, deck got nerfed, but you still played it the best that you could, and you got that motherfucking dub. Congratulations, man. You fucking deserve that damn win. Good shit, man. Proud of you, bro. Anyway, let's get on to our next, our first match of the night. Somebody I'm not proud of, our first uh, participant in tonight's contest, Adam Crozier, as he gets set to take a uh, uh, team up with Deuce to take on Cody Gray and Tyler Van Diver. As we don't even get any fucking audio. God, God, fucking damn it. All right, hold on a second. Goddamn, Adam Crozier fucked with our fucking audio. We got to go ahead and fix that real quick. Give me just one second as I go ahead and do some technical difficulties real quick. <laughs> fucking hell. I don't know what the hell's going on here. Let me fucking, uh, let's see here. Hopefully I can figure this shit out. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, how's the fucking chat looking now? Uh, fuck to Sean and there's Crystal <laughs> Crystal Beats. Beasts. Fucking almost read that as, uh, Crystal Breaths for some fucking reason. Anyway. Alright, looks like this shit's going, uh, going now. Looks like the audio is working. Let me just double check on... OBS is end. Perfect. All right, uh, and bets will be coming in just a moment as well. Don't you worry your uh, don't you worry your little head about that. Uh, let's see here. Let me go ahead and switch things back over. Oh, you know what? One other thing I forgot to do before we go ahead and get our show on the road. Adam Cruz is not gonna fuck with us this time. Gonna get them fucking uh, notifications turned off. Now let's go ahead and get our show going. Well, minor detail I forgot to do, but you know, it is what it is. Adam Crozier making his way down to the ring. Uh, now, last week, Adam Crozier continued his European Championship Open Challenge, open to any former European champion to challenge him for the title and try to take the championship away from him. The challenge was answered by XTW's Jack Campbell, and despite Campbell picking up the victory with some help from Cody Gray, of course, Unfortunately, due to UPWA's management system, due to the uh, fact that the, the European Championship is owned by Motor City Wrestling, Jack Campbell could not bring the title over to XCW. The match could not be sanctioned. And as a result of technicality, Adam Crozier still gets to hold the European Championship. However... It was announced that as a result of that technicality, as a result of Crozier just barely getting to keep that title around his waist. And his partner from Blackpool, England, weighing in at 248 pounds, Deuce 
Well, it looks like Adam Crozier will be defending said European Championship against Cody Gray at Wrestling Palace. But apart from that, we got to talk about this man right here, the purebred athlete Deuce has just been on an absolute rampage in recent months. It really started back at Sandstorm, at uh, Snowstorm, I should say, when he was eliminated from the 2023 Royal Rumble match. Eliminated by eventual winner Santana Santos. And since then, Deuce had been going on a tirade against Santos, trying to win that spot in the main event of Wrestling Palace away from El Tigre Mexicano. However, in the end, Santos got his way. He managed to hold on to that UP3 title shot by defeating Deuce in a street fight back at MCW Game Over. We'll talk more about that later on. Wait, did the best never even fucking go through? Hang on a second. Why is that not fucking connected? Hold on. I could have sworn I connected this shit. I just realized the fucking bets weren't even going at all. Hang on. Let's see if that works. There we go. I don't know what the fuck is going on with the bets there, but I got that shit figured out now. My apologies. I was wondering why the fuck y'all ain't bet yet. <laughs> Anyway, while Deuce lost that opportunity at the main event of Wrestling Palace, he's gone on to set his sights on a new target in recent weeks. And that man has been the Golden Star Tyler Van Diver. A couple of weeks ago, Van Diver was the first man to accept Adam Crozier's European Open Challenge. But after Crozier was finished with him, After Crozier finished Van Diver, he went on to cut a promo, seemingly calling out any other former European champion, and it looked for a moment like Deuce was going to accept the challenge, except when Deuce got to the ring, rather than go after Adam Crozier, he went right after Tyler Van Diver, and these two have been at odds ever since. Now tonight, Cody Gray and Tyler Van Diver, they have common enemies in the forms of Adam Crozier and Deuce. We all know the history between Gray and Van Diver, these two former UP3 Tag Team Champions, the longest reigning Tag Team Champions at one point, as part of Silver and Gold, but a lot of history has gone down between them ever since then. Oh my god! Disaster kick right off the bat from Crozier, and it already busts Van Diver open. Crozier getting this matchup off to an explosive start, kicks to the gut. As now goes for a double underhook, pulls him in, looking for a backbreaker to Van Diver. Love the in-detail look on Deuce's back. Don't we all, bro? Don't we fucking all? <laughs> Need to give him that fucking Roxanne, uh, not Roxanne, that uh, Raquel Rodriguez animation. Oh, double axe handle right to the back from Van Diver. He makes a tag out to Cody Gray. And uh, one more thing I gotta mention here is earlier tonight, Cody Gray, he came to Tyler Van Diver in the, in the uh, locker room, he was telling him that despite everything they've been through, tonight they are up against an unwinnable, well, an unbeatable force. An unwinnable match for most superstars. However, if anybody can defeat the pair of Adam Crozier and Deuce, it is silver and gold working as a cohesive unit. Tyler Van Diver didn't give Cody Gray an answer on whether or not he'd be willing to work with Gray in such a way yet again. And Van Diver says that the reason that he can't give Gray an answer is because he does not know quite yet if he can trust Gray the way, that he, the way that he once did. But once they're in the ring together, that's when he'll know whether or not he can rekindle the magic that Silver and Gold had once created together. But now, Tyler Van Diver legal once again kicks the gut to Deuce and a punch. Oh, and a pump knee strike brings the purebred athlete down. Crozier, that welcome to Chicago, you asshole. Backbreaker the uh, way 
way worse version of you know, Jericho's Welcome to Winnipeg, you idiot backbreaker. <laughs> Oh, super kick now to Deuce. Turns him around, setting up for some golden keys. As he goes for the cover, hooks the outside leg here to put Deuce away. But only a two count. This match can continue on. A lot left in the tank for the purebred athlete tonight as he gets sent into the corner by the Golden Star. And now Van Diver could be setting up here. Up to the middle rope looking for a Golden Star Destroyer. And into the cover to put Deuce away. Outside leg hooks yet again. That was a surprisingly quick match. But I guess that's what happens when you fucking pile drive a guy who's had a history of neck problems. And Adam Crozier must be noted did absolutely nothing to break up that pin. That was seemingly not worth it for the second city center. There it is again, just completely. You see right there, he's just watching Deuce take that Golden Star Destroyer. Makes no effort to enter the ring and break things up. But just like that, despite having... <laughs> but I fucking love this detail. Despite having both been busted open by Adam Crozier very early on. Tyler Van Diver and Cody Gray going to pick up the victory here tonight over Crozier and Deuce. But now it's time for our next match of the evening. Stick around as we switch things over to the women's division. Uh, uh, Selena Dominguez and Donna Kay going one-on-one -on -one up next. Let's go ahead and get to that one. Uh, let's see. Van Diver talking about uh, rekindling magic with Gray like MCW's a show for Middle East Miles. As he encourages the type of freak to look at the look at the dates on the milk jugs and just say, take, take the one that expires the quickest. Oh my god, that. Hmm. See, I would have figured maybe, maybe Crozier would see, like the uh, see the milk jugs are arranged in a good way for the consumer, where the fucking you know the latest expiration date is in the front. But then, just be an asshole. He goes ahead and rearranges them. Just gives a fucking chaotic evil. He just fucking rearranges them so that the uh, the ones that expire the quickest are in the front as they should be, just to fuck with the next guy. That's the vibe I get from Crozier personally. All right. Either way, Tyler Van Diver and Cody Gray gonna pick up the win for that one real quick. Uh, okay, miss this one really. Let me go ahead and go back to the back to the chat real quick. He said Adam Crozier wouldn't fuck with you on the notification until he had to. Directs his efforts into fucking with the betting, apparently. <laughs> oh, let's see. Alright, but like I said, it's time for our next match. We've got the rock star Donna K taking on La Hija de Diablo. Selena Dominguez one on one. Let's go ahead and get to that. If he had the opportunity, he would mislabel grocery store aisles. <laughs> but yes, Donna K making her way down to the ring. Of course, accompanied uh, to the ring by Judy Parker as well. We all know K and Parker, they go way back over to their time on Extreme Take Down Wrestling together. And in recent weeks, we've seen Judy Parker be on the receiving end of attacks and distractions courtesy of Selena Dominguez. Tonight, however, Dominguez makes her return to the ring. We haven't seen her in months. According to Dominguez, she has not been seen at all on MCW ever since Judy Parker made her arrival here on the blue and white blue and white brand. For sure, Brendan.
from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, Selena Dominguez. And whether it's out of jealousy or just pure hatred, Selena Dominguez, she has had her sights set on Judy Parker in recent weeks, stating that the candle that burns twice as bright lasts half as long. And Judy Parker's candle has been burning very bright for a very long time. And in order to achieve the success that Parker has attained in her short career, she has had to take opportunities away from people like Dominguez. They cut the opener short to make time for Selena, Selena's entrance. You know what? That makes sense, to be honest. But you know what else? This fucking game's been out for over a year now. How the fuck do they still not fix this goddamn helmet that worked in 2K19, man? That's all I gotta fucking want. That's all I gotta know, man. That's all I fucking wanna know. But now Dominguez making her in-ring return. Her first match since all the way back at Snowstorm. And she gets set to take on the former United States Women's Champion, Donna Kay. This will be no easy feat. Donna Kay, she may have been portrayed as a pushover in the past, but ever since returning to MCW earlier this year, Kay has just been... An absolute force, especially while alongside the likes of Roxanne Graves and Judy Parker. But now it's time for this match to get underway. Donna Kay. Selena Dominguez one on one in this match now official. K okay, with the counter elbow top and now a Northern Light Suplex to take the opponent down early on. Look for the quick stomp. Dominguez oh rushes in, able to size up, but gets caught with the back elbow. And now Dominguez kicks to the gut and a DDT just plants K. Not finished yet. Sends her arm first into the mat. Quick stomp to follow up and now looking to go after the head here, but K with the reversal, quick sweep of the leg. To turn things back around now from behind, looking for a, looking for an inverted suplex. Dominguez back up. Oh, takes a kick to the knee and a kick to the gut. Sends into the corner. K now using the ropes to her advantage, pulling against that arm. Oh, double boot to the face and a boot to the chest for good measure. Just like that, Dominguez. Oh, able to regain control for the moment, but. Dem now Donna K turning things back around yet again. Over the top rope and onto the apron gets sense does Dominguez. And now a drop kick sends her crashing down to the floor. K to the outside looking to capitalize here at ringside. As she picks Dominguez up and just brings her right back inside. Doesn't want to take the chance of the environment being used against her. Instead, out of the corner, off the ropes, and a beautiful dropkick there. Now follows up with another dropkick right to the back. I think it's not in a good way thus far. Gonna have to find some way to turn things around if she wants to stay in this one and pick up the win. But Donna K doing a great job at keeping Dominguez grounded, not giving her any chance to come back in this one. As K now goes to the top turnbuckle, setting up here, looking for the stick. Oh no, a leg drop instead. Now the cover. Outside leg hook to put her away, and only a two count. K going to pick Dominguez up, kicks to the gut, setting up for the mic check perhaps. But Dominguez with the reversal, now a right hand rocks her left to the midsection as well. Oh, and a stiff forearm. As she now snapmares her over the top rope, trying to choke her with that rope. Big right hand connects yet again. As she looks to follow up with a scoop slam. No, Dem Donna K with the reversal into the inverted DDT. Oh, and now a stiff knee strike across the face. 
Looking for a standing senton bomb. Dominguez, uh, Dominguez getting those knees up, however, but K is fighting right back into it. Knife edge chop takes her down. Dominguez back up yet again. And oh, K continues to level on the offense. Does not give Dominguez a single opportunity. And now this time delivers the stage dive. Going for the cover to put her away. Leg is hooked. Shoulders are down. And only a two count. The Grand Metal League springboard dropkick really is neat, isn't it, though? <laughs> Not so neat in PvP, but against an AI, it sure, sure is fucking good. Oh! She's a slow and methodical mat slam there from Donna K. She sends her arm first into the mat, but a Pele from the ground. And Dominguez, no. Gets caught yet again. Now Donna K. Oh, with an upside down frown. And a hip toss as well. Just not giving Dominguez any opportunities here. Now delivers the mic check. Into the cover. Shoulders down. And just like that, no. Dominguez still able to get the shoulder up. But Kay going to go to the top turnbuckle again. Off the top rope for another stage dive. Into the cover one final time, and still just a two count. Donna K is getting infuriated here. Looking for another standing senton, but once again, Dominguez gets those knees up. Looking for double X handle. Oh! Okay. <laughs> oh! Nice German suplex there. Now off the ropes. Unable to connect with the splash. Now Dominguez looking to capitalize with a vertical suplex. But no K from behind. Into the German suplex. And another knee strike just dropping Dominguez. That sends her arm first into the mat yet again. Looking now maybe for a cross arm bar trying to force the submission here. And Dominguez maybe forced to tap out here. K cranking up the pressure. And Dominguez submits. K316 said that mic check should have been the end of the match. Stone what? <laughs> oh god, now what? Nah, fuck you. <laughs> fuck this stupid ass game. Anyway, it's time for our fucking next match here. Stupid ass cutscenes. Uh, anyway, up next we got our triple threat match. Like I said earlier, triple threat between Chris Hunter, Brian Brutus, and Devin Porter. Where the winner's team will go on to challenge the block party for the UPW Tag Team Championship at Wrestling Palace. TKO. <laughs> I like that. I'm not gonna lie, that match was really fucking one-sided though. That shit was honestly annoying me a little bit how one-sided that was. <laughs> what really fucking annoyed me, uh, I'll be honest, what really annoyed me was when K was going for that fucking chokeslam or whatever. And that move just takes so fucking long to hit, bro. Like, I don't know how the hell, like... She literally got a reversal, went for the move, and still got hit with a fucking, uh, something else from K. And then she went for it again, and somehow K dodged it. Which I don't think is a thing that you can do with, uh, submissions and signatures, but whatever. Uh, let's see here. Let me go ahead and get the betting ready for this next match real quick. Uh, this fucking game is just incredibly solid. I don't know what I fucking care about. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, this game is just fucking broken and always has been, and probably always will be. Uh, but now it's time for our next match. we got Brian Brutus, Chris Hunter, and Devin Porter. Triple threat action. Let's go ahead and get to it. Now, in my opinion, out of all the teams 
that are being represented in tonight's matchup. I would argue that Strength and Power have the strongest claim at the UPW Tag Team Championship due to their victory over the block party a couple of weeks ago back on MCW 189. Absolutely incredible tag team match between both sides, but in the end, it was Chris Hunter who knocked out a tag team champion in order to pick up the victory that night. And his opponents, first from Alexandria, Virginia, weighing in at 282 pounds, Brian Brutus. And then, of course, we have Brutal Brian Brutus is even makes his way down to the ring now. Uh, as I understand, if Brutus wins tonight, he will not be the one representing Blood Money in the Tag Team Championship match. Rather, it will be Oxley and DGX, which makes Brutus sort of an X-Factor here. Makes it difficult for the block party to study tonight's matchup and get ready for their Tag Team title defense should Brutus be the one to pick up the victory tonight. But that says a lot about the headspace of Blood Money right now. They are sending in their strongest reinforcement because, well, you have to assume it's because Oxley and DJX in the past, while they've had numerous opportunities to capture the EPW Tag Team titles, they just haven't been able to do so yet. And then, of course, we have the Punisher, Devin Porter, making his way down to the ring. He's just been an absolute beast in singles action. Of course, alongside his brother, TJ, Devin Porter, well, the Kiwi Buzzstars are still a formidable force, but just Devin Porter on his own is something to be reckoned with. And that is something that Brian Brutus and Chris Hunter are going to learn here tonight, I fear. Big Violent Boy is going to start some real shit here. You're damn right about it. And we get to witness the whole thing. Oh, Chris Hunter and Brutus starting things off. Going right after each other. But now Devin Porter getting into the mix. And Chris Hunter is going to go ahead and step back. Let the others who go ahead and take each other out. Smart strategy there now goes after Brutus. But Brutus, after taking down Porter, going to work on Hunter. Send him face first into the corner with some snake eyes. Goes right back after the Punisher who capitalizes. And now it seems as though Hunter and Porter maybe forming some sort of alliance here against Brutus, perhaps. Oh, no, Hunter just taking them both down with one right hand. But just like that, Brutus able to overpower Hunter and bring him down to the backbreaker. Now going to launch Porter into the corner. But Porter with a quick back elbow, able to fight out of it. Still gets caught, and Brutus lifting the seven-footer all the way up into the sky just to slam him all the way down to the mat. But Chris Hunter with those quick right hands able to catch Brutus off guard, now delivering him right into the midsection. In this match, there are no allies, just targets. I couldn't have said it any better myself. And what big targets to land on here. As Chris Hunter continues to land these lefts and rights, just drops Brutus with that one. But that's going to give Porter the opportunity to take advantage, attack Hunter from behind, and gain the offensive going forward in this matchup. Stun gun to Hunter has him down. Going to pick him back up, though. Pulls him in. Oh, and slams him down with that massive spine buster. But going to go to the outside. Maybe setting his sights on Brian Brutus, or rather going to retrieve a weapon, a steel chair. No disqualifications under these triple threat rules. Oh! Chris Hunter able to disarm Porter, however. Oh! And I guess that chair launched over the top of and out of the ring. Out of anybody's grasp as he just takes Porter down. Now goes back to work on Brutus, who responds with a slap. That may have been a mistake, as he'll learn soon, sure enough. But now bringing... Hunter face first into the corner a couple of times. Meanwhile, Porter just taking his time watching it all go down from the other side of the ring. Wazing gets caught. Brutus with a bear hug on Porter trying to force the tap. 
but Chris Hunter is right there to break things up. But hold on a moment, now Brutus has his sights set on Hunter and just, just pressing him up in that gorilla press. Just using Chris Hunter as a goddamn barbell here. But now Brute is going to bring a baseball bat into the equation. Porter not allowing him to use it instead of suplex. Takes the bigger man down. Well, it's hard to argue that Brutus is the bigger man. Maybe the wider man. But Porter certainly has the height advantage over both of his opponents in tonight's matchup. Now Porter going to go to the middle turnbuckle. Looking for a diving leg drop. Right across the chest as Brutus was trying to get up as well. Just to add even more damage to that offensive maneuver. Now delivers the MAD going for the cover here. But Chris Hunter breaking things up at two. Now Porter forced to deal with Hunter. Takes him down to the neck breaker. Looking to follow up. Hunter with a stiff right hand to the midsection. Now one to the face. And hold on a second. Brutus and Hunter working in unison here for a double suplex. Just like that, Porter has been disposed of. That leaves Hunter and Brutus. Go! Oh, big slam in the center of the ring. Now has the baseball bat yet again. Right across the face just drops Hunter where he stands. Oh, and now a vicious clothesline taking Brutus down. Not finished yet. Sends him into the corner. Hold on a second, Brutus has Hunter up once again, continuing to just use him as an exercise machine as he drops him with the Gorilla Press. Now lifts him up, setting up here for a burning diamond. Brutus into the cover, and Porter is right there to break things up before even the count of one. But now Brutus has Porter locked into the bear hug. Trying to force the submission out of the big man. But, oh no! A big Kiwi headbutt. Able to break himself free from the submission hold. But just like that, Brutus able to overpower Porter into a power slam. And now Brutus has a sight set on Hunter. Just takes the baseball bat from him in... Runs it right into the ribs. Now a shot to the back. And now going after the ribs of Porter. He's able to get back up. Oh, and a big boot just devastates Brutus. Big Devin Brutus are like brick shit houses any way you slice through them. Oh, man. And speaking of getting sliced, you can see Brian Brutus wearing those wounds of war as Porter goes over the top rope, delivering a leg drop across the back of the head it just absorbs that running body block that Brutus attempted to run port, run through Porter with but still Brutus back in control delivers another burning diamond this time to Porter Hunter down on the outside going for the cover is Brutus one two but only a two And now has the bat once again, does Brutus, and he just lays into both men with it. The Hunter back up and takes him down to the clothesline. Brutus trying to get right back up, and Hunter going to drop him right back down to that right hand. Turns the tension back towards Porter as Brutus also gets up. Trying to stun him with this combination. Oh, runs him right into, right into Brutus' ass. <laughs> But now Porter back in control. Sends Hunter face first into the corner. Meanwhile, Brutus setting up yet again. Lifts him up and slams him down. Quick jab has him staggered. Lifts Brutus up. Just carrying around. What's Hunter thinking here? He's taking too long. Brutus able to fight free with those elbows. But now Hunter back in control. Now Brutus back in control. And now Brutus has Hunter up on his shoulders and going to powerbomb him to the outside. Oh, but runs right into a baseball bat from Big Dev. Able to get out of the way, disarms him. Now Porter with a kick to the gut, lifts, pulls him in 
for a belly to belly on the chair. Oh, looking for a KO punch was Hunter, but now he takes that Kiwi headbutt from the big New Zealander as he swings for the fences. Wait a minute, Hunter, go! With some brass knucks and Porter may be out cold. What is Hunter doing here? He's not done yet. I think he knows that that's not enough to keep Porter down. He's bringing a kendo stick into the fray. Uh, nope, never mind. <laughs> Gotta go for the pin anyway. And just like that, Chris Hunter picks up the win and strength in power. Will challenge for the UPW Tag Team Championship at Wrestling Palace. Had to clip the into Brutus' ass. <laughs> I don't fucking blame you. But man, what a match right there between these three behemoth athletes. Thought for sure that was it right there, that burning diamond. That burning diamond from Brian Brutus onto Devin Porter. Hunter was nowhere, nowhere to be seen. But somehow Brutus, somehow Porter was able to kick out. However, it would be for naught. As Hunter would come back into the fray. Get rid of Brian Brutus. And KO Devin Porter's lights out. With a pair of brass knucks. But now it's time for our next match of the evening. Stick around as we switch things back over to the women's division. For this next one, Mandy set to take on the Golden Goddess. Cindy Van Diver one on one. There we go. Uh, depending on where the story goes, Hunter's Nux is a great story beat. Uh, love that the game did something good for us. Honestly, it's always nice when you get like a, a get a good rare finish like that, you know? Rather than a fucking random ass suplex being the goddamn end to a five star 20 minute match. 2K22. It, it's a game that happens. But hey, better than 2K20. Uh, let's see you. Uh, geez, you barely see that reversal Brutus doing that power slam on Big Dev was incredible, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, I don't even know when the fucking last time I saw that reversal was, but like, that made a lot of sense for Brutus, though. Really, really fucking shut off Brutus' power right there. Like, without a doubt, I think Brutus... I think in Kayfabe, Brutus actually is the strongest wrestler. Deuce might give him a run for his money. But I think Brutus actually might be the strongest person in the UPWA. And that right there is a key, exa key example of why. Alright, but now it's time for our next match. Like I said, we got Mandy taking on Cindy Van Diver one on one. Let's go ahead and get to that one. Now last week, Mandy made her arrival to MCW by coming to the aid of Roxanne Graves and Donna Kay when they were being attacked after the six woman tag team match by the Bakers and Cindy Van Diver. However, by coming to their aid by making that save, you have to know that Mandy has put herself, herself in the sights, in the crosshairs of the Golden Goddess and the Bakers. And as such, Mandy now gets set to go one on one with Cindy Van Diver here tonight. And from West Palm Beach, Florida, Cindy Van Diver. And just as Roxanne Graves has, or just as Mandy has the 
International Women's Champion Roxanne Graves in her corner. So will Van Diver have the Bakers to accompany her. Now at Wrestling Palace, Cindy Van Diver will go one on one with Roxanne Graves for that International Women's Championship, but before she gets there, she wants to make sure that Graves has nobody to stand in her corner. Van Diver wants to make sure that Mandy, Donna Kay, and Judy Parker all fall one way or another to give herself the best possible chance of walking out of Wrestling Palace as the new International Women's Champion. And Van Diver looking... <laughs> well, I guess neither of them know how to fucking handspring, right? Van Diver looking to make good on that by taking out Mandy here tonight as she drops a knee across the arm. Not going to follow up as she picks Mandy up. No, quick sweep the leg there. And now Mandy in control as she sends her head first into the mat, just dribbling her head on the canvas. Not finished yet, unleashing these right hands. Looking to follow up, but Van Diver fights back up to her feet with that quick right hand to the midsection. Now launches her off the ropes. Bit of a misstep there by the Golden Goddess. Mandy looking to capitalize. Oh, it takes a kick to the gut and an elbow and a slap. Another elbow, a couple more. Follows up with a textbook scoop slam. And now Van Diver with a figure four head scissor locked in, trying to force the submission, but Mandy able to fight free. Now just launching her across the ring. A couple of boots to the face there for good measure. Absolutely no shortage of history between these two women. Absolutely no love lost between them either. Mandy and Van Diver, they've competed against each other for championships in the past. They know each other so incredibly well. But I don't think anybody's ever gotten inside the head of Mandy quite as well as Cindy Van Diver has in the past. And now Mandy, oh, able to stop that onslaught of offense, just runs Van Diver over that clothesline, now slaps her into the corner. Going after the leg, oh! Leg isolated around the rope, and Mandy takes full advantage. Low looking for the kicks of the knee, knee that usually sets up for a golden wizard, Mandy. Wisely sidesteps it, however, but now Van Diver from behind with a German suplex. And Van Diver, oh! Spinning soul kick, oh! Not really sure who got the worst of that spinning soul kick, but Mandy capitalizes with a spear, only gets a two count. And now Mandy looking for a handspring. Into a tilt-a-whirl head scissor takedown. But she's not finished yet. Going to the top turnbuckle now. And Mandy with a swanton bomb to Van Diver. Oh! Kick right across the face, right to the temple. Has her staggered. Picks her back up and sends her into the corner. Her runs right, or runs shoulder first into that middle turnbuckle. Mandy capitalized with an alley-oop bomb out of the corner. And not finished yet, going after the legs. Hold on a second, taking a taking a page out of former international women's champion Emily Sharp's playbook with his modified sharpshooter. But Van Diver able to fight free, not going to go for maybe a desperate pin here. Lateral press employed in the center of the ring, but only does not even get a one count. Now Mandy has her up, setting up for the long kiss goodnight, but Van Diver knows her so well, like I mentioned earlier. But Mandy... Knows Van Diver so well, too. Now pulls her in. Oh, drops with that clothesline. Still has a hold of the wrist. Delivers a second short arm clothesline. Steps over. Going to pick her up for a third and final short arm. And again, just dribbling that head off the canvas. But Mandy isn't finished yet. Pit waiting for Van Diver to get back up. Lifts her up once more, ties up the legs, and delivers the long kiss goodnight. Both legs hooked, both shoulders are down. And only a two count. Van Diver 
barely kicks out. Now Mandy to the top turn buck looking for a diving elbow drop. Got a little overzealous there. Van Diver rolls out of the way. But hold on a second. Mandy reversal here. Takes her down to the arm drag. Oh, and pulls her in for another short on the clothesline. Punches right to the skull here. Grabbing her by the hair for good measure. Making sure that she cannot get away from those punches. Now picks her up. Oh, spinning leg. Larry just took her head off with that one. Going right for the pin. Shoulders down. Leg is hooked. But still only a two count. And now Mandy setting up again for the long kiss good night, but this time Van Diver able to reverse her and sets up for, oh, a, sort of a Golden Star DDT there, modified variation, but she's not finished yet. Picks her up and takes a kick to the gut. But Van Diver back in control again. Now brings her face first into the corner. Mandy back up, avoids a slap, oh, and takes her down to the calf kick. And now it's Van Diver unleashing these rights. Into the cover now. Feet on the ropes. Ref doesn't see a thing. But still, Mandy kicks out at one. We're able to avoid it. Vicious slap. And now from behind. Oh, with a devastating backbreaker. Now going to follow up as he drops a knee across the arm. Kicks in the back for good measure. Mandy back up. Gets caught. And sent head first into the mat. And now Van Diver finally setting up, looking to put the end to this one. Lifts her up and delivers the GDT. Center of the ring. Shoulders are down. But only a two count. Somehow this match continuing on, but Van Diver has one more in the tank. Grabs her again and hits a second GDT. Shoulders down, outside leg is hooked, but still only a two. Wait a minute. Van Divers going for broke, going for three. But Mandy able to avoid that. Wait a minute, kicks the leg. And a golden wizard. Now the cover for a third and final time, and Van Diver picks up the win. All right, now that was a good finish. Say what you want about Cindy Van Diver, but that was a good finish. Just barely finishing before midnight. That match, at least, for sure. But we still have one more to go through our main event. Six-man tag team action up next. But still, what a match between these two veterans of the game. And in the end, Van Diver going to pick up a key victory and rack up some momentum heading in to Wrestling Palace. You have to know that Roxanne Graves is disappointed by the outcome of tonight's match. But when you're in the ring against somebody like the Golden Goddess, you have to know that you are always outmatched. Cindy Van Diver picks up the victory tonight, but now it is time for our main event of the evening. Stick around as we get set for the six-man tag team match. Duncan Jones, Dustin James, and Marco Rodriguez getting set to face off against La Armada del Mexico in this six-man tag team match. Did the Bakers go from uh, being in Sharp's corner to being in Cindy's corner? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Where have you been, been Brendan? <laughs> And I don't mean just now, I know you are just driving, but where the fuck have you been? That's been a thing for a few weeks now. Let's see. I know you had to pick up your sister. That, I know you, but where have you been? Like, the, the Bakers have been in Van Diver's corner for fucking weeks now. <laughs> I'm very blind, <laughs> fair enough. It'd be like that sometimes. Uh, I did at least explain it, kind of, in uh, one of the promos. You know, the Emily Sharp gone over on XW now. Fucking Cindy Van Diver. Well, the, the Bakers no longer have their uh, their alcohol supplier. Cindy Van Diver fucking <laughs> buying the beer now for their protection. 
Simple as that, to be honest. Oh, uh, let's see. This tag match is uh, either going to be 4 minutes or 40 minutes. Yeah, there is no in-between. I'll have to go back and read it. It was from a few weeks ago. I want to say it was like... I want to say it was after MCW 189 or before MCW 190. It was one of those weeks. Basically, Sandy Van Diver was being interviewed by Aaron Ryan. Uh... It was basically just a promo about Cindy Van Diver, I think, staking her claim at the International Women's title. Something like that. And I figured I'd go ahead and explain the relationship with her and the Bakers while I was at it. Because I figured it wouldn't really make much sense, seeing as how Van Diver was just feuding with the Bakers and Emily Sharp. Not too long before that. Literally right before that. But... Now, in all honesty, I figured Cindy Van Diver could use some extra muscle going up against... Graves and friends, so with Sharp gone out of the picture, I figured this made sense. Uh, let's see, what am I forgetting to do? I'm forgetting to pay the bets out. Is what I'm forgetting to do. Except there's nobody to pay the bets out too, so I guess I'm off the fucking hook then, ain't I? Let's see. Give me one quick second here. There we go. Alright, music's about to end. Let's go ahead and get this next fucking match going. <laughs> Six-man tag team match, main event. Let's go ahead and get to it. Yeah, pretty much, Brendan. They're just selling their fucking services. <laughs> yeah. Earlier tonight, the challenge was laid out to Marco Rodriguez to face La Armada del Mexico in a six-man tag team match. Rodriguez agreed. And from there, it was on him to find himself a couple of partners. Duncan Jones was an obvious choice in the sense that he is a marked man by the Armada after, his, after picking up the victory with some help from Marco Rodriguez last week in beating Pedro Rodriguez, the leader of the Armada. Without a doubt, the Armada is going to be coming after Duncan Jones sooner or later. It is honestly in Jones' best interest to help Marco in his fight against them right now. Of course, we have one half of the tag team champions, Dustin James, making his way down to the ring. Now, Dustin James and Marco Rodriguez, while it may not seem like it, they do have a bit of history themselves. Way back in the day, I'm talking season one, Dustin James and Marco Rodriguez formed a very short-lived tag team called the Cult of Personality. And it seems as though even after all these years, Marco and Dustin are still on somewhat good terms with each other. And Dustin seemed more than willing to help Marco in his fight tonight. As we learned earlier on, Dustin James, as, uh, alongside his brother Justin Wilsh, will defend those GP3 Tag Team Championships against Strength in Power at Wrestling Palace. But tonight... 
Dustin has La Armada del Mexico to set his sights on. Really need to see footage of Dustin making Marco do the worm now. <laughs> But then, of course, we have the outcasted member of La Familia Rodriguez. The history between Pedro and Marco Rodriguez is a very complicated one, and it would take way too long to get into it here. But as we inch closer and closer to Wrestling Palace with each passing minute, it seems as though their destinies are meant to collide on the grand stage. However, in the meantime, in an effort to suppress the power that El Mariposa Muerto has attained, Pedro Rodriguez tonight is sending his men in to eliminate the threat that Marco Rodriguez poses here tonight. But with allies such as the longest reigning European champion and the current UPW Tag Team Champion, It's hard to say that this will be an easy feat for the Armada in tonight's main event. But of course, you cannot discount the UPWA champion, Loki Lopez, and alongside at a combined weight of 550 pounds. Alongside his trusted tag team partner and challenger at Wrestling Palace, Santana Santos. As well as their longtime ally, Straight Edge. The only man missing from this equation is, of course, the leader of the Armada, the master manipulator, Pedro Rodriguez. However, this is still a very formidable force that Marco and company are set to face off against here tonight. There has to be some animosity between the brothers. Isn't there always animosity, animosity between sets of brothers in uh, pro wrestling? Isn't that just like two things that go hand in hand? <laughs> Alright, but here we go. It's going to be Duncan Jones and Straight Edge starting this matchup off. Now, I think this is going to be an interesting clash to start this six-man tag team contest off here as Straight Edge employing a submission across armbar over the top rope trying to break the shoulder of Duncan Jones early on. Both these superstars very much favor that quick paced, high flying and high impact style of offense. But just like that, Straight is making that quick tag to locally Lopez, who's going to match and surpass Duncan Jones's agility as he delivers that springboard tornado DDT. Now going for an early cover in this one to put Jones away, not even a one count, or does get a one count, but not even a two count. And now Loki Lopez looking to take care of Dustin James. A lot of history between those two superstars as well. Oh! Can't forget about that time many years ago when Dustin James defeated Loki Lopez for the UPWA Championship. But then just a few weeks later, Lopez won the title right back from him to become the first ever two-time UPWA Champion in history. Now Lopez just taking a moment, taunting. Duncan Jones he rests there on the middle turnbuckle, waiting for him to get back up. Oh, it just takes him down to the senton. And now Santana Santos legal. The Armada thus far utilizing frequent tags to their full advantage as Jones now tries to fight back between Neckbreaker and a splash to Santos. But both men right back up. 
Santos from behind. Sends Jones into the corner. Oh, and he just drops right back down and takes a soccer style kick. Follows up with a springboard moonsault. Santana Santos is not taking his foot off the gas. He's keeping the pace at 100 miles per hour here. Duncan Jones going to try to match it as he sweeps the leg. But Santana Santos now makes a tag out to Marco Rodriguez for the first time in this match. Oh, he takes a kick. And we can't forget either, a few weeks ago, Marco Rodriguez made his return to the ring against Santana Santos, where he was very quickly defeated. However, it seemed as though that was all part of Rodriguez's plan. It seemed like he was feigning defeat against Santos in order to gain a moral victory over the Armada. But now Santana Santos is going to take him down to that incredible agility. Now off the top rope looking for another moonsault. Does not connect this time. Now Marker tags in Dustin James. I mean Justin and Dustin don't. Maybe they don't yet. Hmm, hmm, hmm. You know, just uh, just throwing that out there, you know. <laughs> you gotta wonder who's who's the Jeff and who's the Matt, you know. Anyway, Santos is gonna make the tag now to Straight Edge, who just takes a spinning soul kick there from James. <laughs> Please no. <laughs> and now Marco Rodriguez back in. Quick kick to the shoulder of Straight Edge. Oh, and now a knee right to the shoulder. Straight Edge fighting back. Kick to the gut. Oh, and a knee to the gut. And from behind with a famous sir. Now to the top turnbuckle calling for Marco to get back up. And off the top rope turns around looking for some whisper in the wind. Now Straight Edge with these boots right to the chest trying to cave in those ribs trying to collapse a lung perhaps as now straight edge delivers that springboard move so all these attacks to the midsection gonna make it a lot more difficult for Marco Rodriguez to breathe as he rakes the eyes through the mask gonna make it more difficult to breathe which is gonna make it a lot more difficult to continue fighting in this matchup C difficult to keep up the pace with these three world traveled luchadors but now Marco fighting back with these elbows to the midsection. Able to create some distance. Quick knife edge and a flatliner taking down straight edge. Now tag made back to Dustin. One half of the EPW Tag Team Champions. But he gets caught into a Koji clutch. But just like that, Duncan Jones able to slip into the ring and break things up. But Straight Edge going to go for the cover now to put an end to this match, but he only gets a two count. This one continues on. Tag made to Lopez. And Lopez now to the top turnbuckle. Could be looking to put Dustin away as he calls for him to get back up. What is Lopez thinking here? Looking for... Oh! Well, I'm glad the referee blocked a fucking shot there, but... Lopez looking for Templo Azteca off the top rope. Dustin somehow catches him and reverses with a clothesline. Now has Lopez up looking for the Dustin Valley driver. Falls right into the cover going for the pin. However, Straight Edge is right there to break things up at two. But just like that, Dustin James, couple of jabs, little bit of dancing, and just runs right through with that third right hand. Now going to continue his focus on Lopez looking to put the UPWA champion away here. Going to do a little bit of moonwalking. Going to give Lopez some time, it seems. Dustin James trying to get the crowd on his side here, giving them a bit of a show. But he's giving Lopez time to recover, and that is not what you want to do when you're in the ring with the UPWA champion. Oh! Double stomp right to the arm, and Dustin James, I'm sure, is regretting his decisions from just a moment ago. Now a tag made to Santana Santos. And even with straight edge down, as tags go, are still a force to be reckoned with, even in a two-on-three handicap scenario. Marco Rodriguez is going to just <laughs> run a fucking lap, I guess, whatever. Either way, Dustin able to kick out of that Spanish fly there. 
Meanwhile, Salas is trying to get rid of Marco Rodriguez from the equation. Deposits him over the top rope, but that's going to give Dustin some time to capitalize. Brings him face first into his team's corner, but Santos fighting free. But now Dustin looking for a... Oh! Vertical suplex connects. Picks him right back up, this time for a backdrop suplex. But just like that, Santos able to fight back. Spinning soul kick to the midsection. Takes him down. Tag made to Lopez as Dustin tries to crawl away. Lopez just return of the favor here. Just hopping. Hopping on James right now. Not at all taking the UPW Tag Team Champion seriously. Showing that he is beneath the UPWA Champion. But now it's Dustin James who's going to make Lopez pay for giving him that time to recover. Oh! Spiking Lopez with the DDT. Now Dustin looking to capitalize as he goes to the top turnbuckle. Setting up here looking for some dust in the wind! Center of the ring! Shoulders down, leg is hooked. But Straight Edge breaking things up at two. And now Straight Edge gonna launch Duncan Jones. As Lopez takes James down to the Hurricane Rod. Jones deposited to the outside. Effectively making this a two on three handicap in the favor of La Armada. Meanwhile, Lopez with these quick strikes, these open palms, punches, and a knee strike to finish off the sequence just drops James with that one. Now follows up with La Profecia. Into the cover to put. James away, but Marco Rodriguez right there to break things up before even a one count. However, Lopez right on top of the action, going to the top turnbuckle, waiting for James to get back up. No way, Jones getting back inside, causing a distraction. Forces Lopez to reevaluate, change his plan, and that is going to give James enough time to recover and turn things back around. Exploder into the scoop slam now going for the cover to put Lopez away, but only a two counts Tag now made to Duncan Jones who looks to get himself some of the UP3 champion gets caught Lopez with Templo Azteca Center of the ring nowhere for James nowhere for Jones to go But Marco right there to break things up with two Jones able to kick out on his own accord regardless but either way, this matchup is continuing on one way or another. Now Santana Santos legal once again. And delivers a Tiger Twist cutter to Jones. Going for the pin yet again to put Jones away. But still only a two count. Jones continues to fight on valiantly. And now Straight Edge tagged in. And Straight Edge to the top turnbuckle. What's he thinking here? Calling for Jones to get, bu get back up. And diving elbow drop connects. Off the ropes with a springboard moonsault. And while at ringside, Loki Lopez going to work on Marco. That gives Straight Edge the chance to go for the cover. But still only a two count. Jones continues to fight on. And Dustin James. Oh, brain buster. Oh, looking for the Cyclone into Geary. Looking for S. Or, uh, uh, or looking for that fucking kill shot. Was straight edge, but he gets a slam dunk for his troubles. Into the cover. Ref doesn't see the rope break. Duncan Jones picks up the win. Here are your winners. Well, definitely a questionable finish. No denying that, but there is also no denying the fact that at the end of the night, it is Duncan Jones, Dustin James, and Marco Rodriguez standing tall over La Armada del Mexico. Incredible episode of MCW here tonight. I want to go ahead and thank everyone for watching. This was a great episode. Brendan and Yanni, thank you both for sticking around throughout the show. I appreciate y'all tuning in, as always. Uh, be sure to tune in to XTW number 192. Next Tuesday night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and MCW 192 next Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, let's see here. 
Of course, these will be the go-home shows for Wrestling Palace. These will be the final episodes of XTW and MCW, respectively. We've certainly come a long way, everybody. <laughs> and the end of the road is, all, is very much upon us. But while I've got you here, uh, just going to give a quick little announcement. That Wrestling Palace, uh, it will be taking place a little uh, later than expected, essentially. Now, of course, usually pay-per-views take place on, uh, like, a Saturday or something. That's usually the plan. Of course, with my work schedule, that's not exactly ideal anymore, which is why we've been having pay-per-views on Thursdays instead. But Wrestling Palace, for if I haven't announced it already, it will be a two-day event. Which means that we are going to need, well, obviously, two different days to uh, host the show. Which means we're going to need a whole separate week. So while XTW and MCW, the final episodes, will be taking place next week, Wrestling Palace will, uh, would ideally be taking place the week after. However, another however, there's also some preparation that I'm going to have to do before we can get Wrestling Palace underway. Alright, there's a couple of things that I want to do but to make sure that this is truly a memorable show. So there will likely be at least one more week in between next week's episodes in Wrestling Palace. Alright, so I'm giving you all that warning right now. I am uh, going to try to remember to post something about this in the Discord. As we all know, my fucking... Uh, my consistency with making announcements on Twitch and then following through on Discord is not very great, but you know. Basically, that is, that's the current plan. XTW and MCW next week. Tuesday and Thursday, respectively. Wrestling Palace, at least two weeks from then. So essentially what we're looking at, just to give a more specified uh, date, I guess, is June 13th and June 15th is what we're looking at. I don't know for sure that I'll have these things done in time by that time and if I don't then I will have to push the uh, show back by at least another week cause tr like trust me this is something that is very fucking important <laughs> plus there's all the fucking other things I need to do to uh, prepare like making the fucking match graphics and shit but yeah that's currently where we stand I just want to go ahead and let y'all know so that you're not caught off guard when I eventually do make that announcement sometime in the future. Uh, just giving y'all some preparation time, pretty much. But, apart from that, once again, thank you everybody for tuning in. This was an amazing episode of MCW. Jam-packed, like I said, I don't think there were really too many disappointments tonight. But be sure to tune into you. XW 192, MCW 192, next Tuesday and Thursday, respectively, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for both shows. And until next time, this was MCW 192, 191, rather, live from San Francisco, California. And this is your boy, Doug the Dog 6. I am signing off. You guys have a fucking wonderful night. You guys have a happy, happy Friday. And I'll catch you all next time. Have a good one, y'all. I will see you later. <laughs>